Texting, texting, we are back. Segment three, IDD, for those of you in the know, I don't disagree. I am the highly questionable entrepreneur that you're flying solo tonight on a tip on back Tuesday here in the mid-sack and a very fall-like sack. A very Halloween is in the air. I love it. Football is back. But we are going to turn our attention to the WNBA because why not? Um, it's fun. It's exciting. It's all because of Caitlin Clark. And doesn't that just piss all you Angel Reese fans off? Good. It should. Um, event. Speaking of Angel Reese, before we get to the MVP candidate that is Caitlin Clark, um, for the seventh straight game, the Sky get bent over by the two-time defending champs. Uh, the Ace is led by the MVP frontrunner, Asia Wilson, and to the tune of 30 points, 14 rebounds, three assists, two steals, and three blocks. Holy Moses, Asia Wilson have a game on 10 of 19 shooting, I might add. Uh, the Aces dominate the Sky 90-71. to 71. Out in Vegas, uh, Reese did have a double-double, 12 points, 16 rebounds, 3 assists, a couple steals, uh, 4 for 12 shooting, 0 for 1 from 3, 4 for 7 from the foul line. Um, they were led by, uh, again, their, their leading scorer, again, doesn't look like she played. Uh, that would be Kennedy Carter. Um, so they did put four people in double figures, but really were no match for the Aces, who looks like they played the game without Kelsey Plum. And still won. Hayes had 20. Gray, the guard, 13. Young, 15. The bench didn't do much, but didn't have to because the starters just just pasted the sky, who have now dropped seven in a row. <laughs> they fall to 11 and 22, okay, which means there are seven games left. So for them to match their win total from last year, which was 18 games, they're going to have to reel off seven in a row. What are the odds of that? Um, Reese played 31 minutes. Asia Wilson played 35 minutes. Um, this game was a 16-point game at the half. It was 15 after three. They never really mounted a comeback, um, they being uh, the sky. Um, I mean, right now they're lucky. The Dream, the Dream, who they were tied with for the eighth playoff spot, uh, they lost to Phoenix 74-66 tonight, so they still remain tied there, both 11-22 for the eighth spot. Um, switching gears to the standings of the WNBA right now, as, as tonight has unfolded. Um, the Liberty have a three-game lead for the 1C, 27-6. and six. The Connecticut Sun, who lost tonight, by the way, um, to 24-9. They are tied with the Lynx for the second seed. Um, I think they hold the tiebreaker. The Aces, the defending champs who won tonight, are, are three games back in the fourth spot. The Seattle Storm, who won tonight um, against the Mercury, who are fading they are in the fifth spot. The Indiana Fever have now moved up to sixth. Okay? Uh, and uh, they play again tomorrow night, I believe, against at home against the Sparks, who are in last place. So, right now, the Indiana Fever have won four more games than they did last year. And right now, the Chicago Sky have lost... <laughs> or are seven games below where they were last year. So again, they're gonna to have to run the table to match it, just to match their 18 and 22 record last year. Um, Kaylin Clark has closed the deal, which I don't understand why it was even open this long, um, on, the, on the Rookie of the Year conversation. She has now entered the MVP race. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Um, there are two women in this league that are currently, and they still are in the top 20 in six categories, Asia Wilson, who is the MVP frontrunner, and Caitlin Clark. The difference is Asia Wilson is on the two-time world champs, and that team is loaded with talent. Caitlin Clark went to the third-worst team in the league, and they are now in the sixth spot, just three games, actually four games back of the, Vegas, of the Las Vegas Aces for the fourth spot. Think about that. In one year. So, and it's not over yet. There's a lot of basketball left to be played. But right now, to me, it's Asia Wilson, Brianna Stewart, and Caitlin Clark. That's the MVP race right now. And like I said, the numbers bear it out. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a hatred of Angel Reese or anything else. I keep saying Angel Reese could be a Hall of Famer, but she has to go work on her game. She doesn't have a game. She has athletic ability and she hustles. Okay? And that gets, makes her a double-double. But she needs a lot more than that to be sitting at the table that we're talking about because that table right now is a table of three. Brianna Stewart, Asia Wilson, who many consider the best player in the world, including myself, and Caitlin Clark. But again, it goes beyond that, okay? The ratings are up. The attendance is up. They just signed the $2.2 billion TV contract. Caitlin Clark has made the impact off the court that none of these players, including Diana Taurasi, ever could make. 
which is probably part of the reason for the disdain, because they're jealous, even though their wallets are all about to get a lot fatter to the point where maybe they don't have to go over the season play anymore. And they will owe Caitlin Clark a big tip of the cap if that does come to fruition. Um, but she is a legitimate MVP candidate. She is leading, leading the league in assists. This girl, think about this. She came in with the reputation of like a Steph Curry, a shooter. Okay? She's leading the league in assists. Okay? Assists. And yes, she's averaging five turnovers a game. But that's because she has the ball in her hands 90% of the time. Every defense she faces, the number one objective is to stop Caitlin Clark. That's true. I'm not making that up. How do we contain Caitlin Clark? Okay. And from the looks of it, she's gotten better as the season has gotten gone on. Okay. Her assists have gone up. Her scoring has gone up. Okay. Her three-point shooting has gone up. Her turnovers are starting to go down a little bit. And she's ha she has the ball in her hands 90% of the time. So for the donkey on Facebook, we try to talk about this stupid I hate this stupid stat, this warp or warp, whatever it is, which is value over replacement player warp thing. That's per possession. Angel Reese doesn't run the Sky offense. So you can talk about per 10 possessions. She doesn't have the ball in her hands anywhere near as much as Caitlin Clark does. So that damn statistic is skewed. Okay, so throw it out the window. It doesn't matter. Okay, the stat that matters is wins and losses and those six categories that Caitlin Clark is currently in the top 20 in. And by the way, two of them are block shots and rebounds, and she is a guard. <laughs> She's a guard. <laughs> All right, so that'd be the equivalent of Angel Reese being in the top 20 in assists. She is not, <laughs> okay? And, shoot, and shooting, she is not. In fact, she is <laughs> her shooting percentage is in the 30s, and she most of her shots are in the paint. That's embarrassing, <laughs> okay? So... She shoots closer and shoots worse. And the defenses aren't fixated on her. Here's the fact about this. The last thing I'm going to say about it. When opposing coaches look at the Chicago sky, their first objective is not to stop Angel Reese. In fact, what they say is, whatever she does, we can live with. She's not going to hurt us. She can get her numbers. They can't beat us with her doing that. we got to stop Kennedy Carter. We gotta stop this girl. We gotta stop that. She is third or fourth down on things to stop, and they have determined that they can live with whatever she does. Twelve points, sixteen rebounds tonight. They lost by twenty. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. She keeps getting these double doubles because no one makes it. Here's the thing, and I'm not talking. About, she hustles. I'm not taking that away from her, but no one has made it a priority to stop it. Why do you think that is? Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Her stats don't impact the game. And I've got seven straight losses to prove it. No one has gone out of their way to stop Angel Reese from getting these double-doubles. They focus on everybody else that's a threat. We can live with whatever she does. No one says that about Caitlin Clark. We can live with what Caitlin does. No, 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 no. That there, right there in that shell, is the difference. And that's why Caitlin Clark is an MVP candidate. Because when you play the New York Liberty, first objective, how do we stop or contain Brianna Stewart? When we play the Las Vegas, two-time world champion Las Vegas Aces, what do we try to do? We got to try and contain Asia Wilson. When we play the Indian Fever, what's our number objective? How do we stop or contain or slow down Caitlin Clark? That's where she is. That is a fact. That is not an opinion. I have played the game. I have coached the game. Okay? And there are players that you, that the first objective, how do we slow or stop that person? If, it, if you can't stop them, how do we slow them down? We got to do something. But we can't let them go off or they'll kill, that kid will kill us. Okay, that's coaching 101. And no one talks that way about Angel Reese and the numbers bear it out. And that's what this clown, okay, on Facebook never understood because he probably never played the game. Because honestly, if your defense of her is VORP and win shares, you don't know anything about basketball. Because those metrics didn't even exist when I played. And they don't matter now. Okay, they don't matter now. Okay, what matters is winning first and foremost. Look at the standings. Okay, and Angel Reese is getting her stats and they keep losing. It's almost detrimental at this point. Think about that for a minute. That's where she is right now. Seven losses in a row and she's getting done. What does that say about her and the team and the coach and everything in between? So Caitlin Clark, on the other hand, is getting better and so is the team with her. They started out one and eight. 
<laughs> okay? They started out one and eight. Now they're 17 and 16. Figure it out, America. Doesn't take that much. But Caitlin Clark is a legit MVP candidate. She's not going to win it. Okay, not unless Asia Wilson has a major collapse. And she's not. She's the best player in the world right now. I won't dispute that. She is. She deserves that. But Caitlin Clark ain't far behind. She's not. And they are going to be a tough out, the Indiana Fever, in the playoffs because of her and her ability to make those around her better, which is the first mark of a truly great player. They make those around them better. I don't think anybody's saying that about Angel Reese right now. In fact, I have heard no one say that about Angel Reese. She's working hard. She's getting her stats. Where's the line about making her teammates better? I haven't heard anyone say it because she isn't doing it. Okay? That's the last I'm going to say about it because honestly, she doesn't even belong in the same sentence with Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark sits at a different table and she always has. Okay? And until Angel Reese works on her skill set, that's the way it's going to be. Just that simple. But Caitlin Clark, I'm here to tell you today as we live and breathe, and I said it before today, she is an MVP candidate. And if they win tomorrow night, they are 18 and 16. And nobody thought when the season started, or the way they started, they'd be 18 and 16 right now. But the main reason is Caitlin Clark's improvement as the season has gone on. If you've been watching her, she's been improving as the season has gone on. Her assists have gone up. Her scoring has gone up. Her shooting has gone up. Her turnovers, yes, have gone down. And they'll continue to go down as she continues to adjust. Again, every game she sees a defense designed to stop her. And she has to adjust. And that's tough when you don't have a lot of great talent around you. But she has done it. And she's got some of these other players playing better and believing. And believing they can win. And their defense as a unit has gotten better. They are a much better defensive team now than they were when the season started. They are. So, and they've bought in. So they're going to be a tough out. I can't wait to see how this closes out. Um, the New York Liberty still, to me, are the team to beat, and they and deservedly so. And if it's going by record, to me, as great as Asia Wilson has been, you can't ignore <laughs> you can't ignore what that girl is doing in New York. You cannot ignore it. Um, she's had a great year, and they're on a mission because they lost to the Aces in the finals last year. But Brianna Stewart, you know, twenty points a game. Um, Eight and a half rebounds, three and a half, almost four assists, a steal and a block a game. Um, yeah, she's, um, man, she's been terrific. She really has. Um, they are legit. That team is a legit contender. And, and right now, I still don't know if anybody can beat them in a series. I don't think anybody can. But it's going to be interesting to see. And I, I'd love to see whew, maybe them in the, if, if things play out. Who knows? Who knows what these second round matchups could look like? But if the Indiana Fever is in there, that's going to be very interesting. So anyway, that's going to do it for segment three on our show tonight. I will return either Friday or Saturday. But when I do, we will preview the NFL slate on Sunday, update you on the WNBA. Um, for those who care, Mets beat the Red Sox back-to-back -back games. The Red Sox are done. They're out of it. Um, do you think that that owner who can't die fast enough because he won't sell the team, John Henry, for this? They didn't go out and get an ace, and they're they're done. Um, the Mets are making headway. They're now eleven games over five hundred. Tom will be happy about that. I'm sure he is. Um, but the Red Sox, I said before the season started, if Alex Cora somehow got seventy wins out of that team, it was a miracle. Well, even with tonight's loss, they're seventy and sixty nine. So tip of the cap to you, Alex Cora, for because you did the, the the job that I hoped you would do. You got me to football season, and now. Since your manager, since your owner undercut you, I'm not blaming you, Alex. Just go away. Go away. <laughs> not your fault. It's football. Get out of the way and let it happen. And the surprise has been the WNBA. So this is going to be a great finish down the stretch. We're going to be here for all of it. I hope you guys are too. But tomorrow's Wet My Whistle Wednesday. You guys finish out the week strong. We will see you Friday or Saturday night, depending on what Mr. Rizzo's mood is. Um, but I'll be here either way. If it's Friday night, we'll preview the college football slate and the NFL slate for Saturday because there's some big games college football this weekend, and we want to talk about those. But my picks for Thursday, obviously you got the, the Ravens on Thursday, and I've got the Eagles on Friday, both close games. Those are my first two picks of the season. Um, if Tom spits them out, I'll let you know what those are. <laughs> but until then, for the one on assignment, it's called Slumberland, the highly questionable one. We will see you guys in the 72 to 96 hours. So until then, boys and girls, you know the drill.